Today's video is sponsored by UASupporter.com. Show your support for Ukraine by repping some gear. They have clothing, tech stuff, bags, hats, mugs, flags, and more. My personal favorite is the Green Trident t-shirt Zelensky wears. Use my links in the description at the end and get 10% off with free shipping on your order from UASupporter.com. How is everybody doing tonight? Thanks for watching. And this is The Silencer. Just wanted to give you guys a heads up before the Intel update. I'm doing all of this in one take. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. Um, might botch up a couple Ukrainian names, but uh, I guess that's to be expected. Anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, let's get into this Intel update now. All right, here's our Intel update from the Institute of Study of War. The Russian Ministry of Defense and Russian sources claim that Russian forces repelled Ukrainian assaults in the barest of Kharkiv Oblast region. Ukrainian sources and geolocated reports indicated that Russian forces destroyed a bridge over the Krasna River in Luhansk Oblast. Russian mill bloggers accused Ukrainian forces of destroying the same bridge. A Russian occupation official stated that Russian forces are preparing to defend Kherson City by engineering defenses in that region. A Ukrainian military official also noted that Russian officials continue to prepare defenses around Kherson City. Ukrainian military officials reported that Russian forces are preparing to withdraw artillery units from unspecified areas on the western bank of the Dnieper River to possibly reinforce other directions. Mil Ukrainian military officials also reported several hundred Chechen soldiers in the Kherson Oblast region. Russian forces continue to shell Ukrainian positions in Belosov Kherson Oblast, and both Ukrainian and Russian sources provided limited information regarding the situation on the Kherson Oblast front line. Russian sources claim that Russian forces catch, captured Vodyne Donetsk Oblast on the evening of October 30th. The Ukrainian general staff's evening report did not report repelling Russian attacks in this area as it usually does, potentially indicating that the Russian claims are accurate. Russian sources reported that Russian forces captured Pavlikla in Donetsk Oblast on October 30th. Some Russian sources claim that Russian forces only control half of Pavlika as of October 30th. The Ukrainian General Staff's evening report did not report repelling Russian attacks in this area like before and as it usually does, potentially indicating that the Russian claims are also accurate. Russian forces launched KH-59 cruise missiles in the Mykolaiv Oblast. Russian sources claim that Russian forces targeted and destroyed military infrastructure in that area. Mobilized men from the Republic of Komi appealed to Russian authorities with complaints of insufficient military equipment and body armor. Russia announced its intention to supply 500,000 tons of grain to the poorest countries following its withdrawal from the deal that allowed Ukraine to export its own grain. Ukraine announced that it intends to export agricultural products to maintain global food security. Ukrainian military officials reported that Russian forces continue to create conditions in Novokovka to drive local inhabitants to evacuate. Occupation authorities in Kherson Oblast announced a dual currency system that allows use, use of both rubles and Ukrainian currency, unwittingly a months-long effort to enforce rubleization in the oblast. Today, we also saw Russia launch over 50 cruise missiles and bombs into Ukraine as a result of retaliation for Ukraine's attack on the Black Sea Fleet. Uh, there'll be a lot more information coming out about this. Um, I don't really want to report on it at this point because it's fluid and lots of information is going to change. But let's get to our videos for tonight. Um, also wanted to let you guys know that YouTube has really cracked down and censored me and has been blocking many of my videos, which is why there's been a gap in uh, more length of time with me posting. Um, I'm going to have to do a lot more editing on these videos. Be very careful about what I show and blur out a lot more images. Um, again, this isn't my decision. This is uh, YouTube's decision. And I don't want to spend hours working on videos only to have YouTube slap them down. Um, it's very frustrating and, and, and as you can imagine, it's very upsetting because I work hard for you guys. So just notice that there will be slight changes in how graphic some of these videos are, but it's not my choice and I hope you guys understand. So let's get to our videos for today. Thanks for watching again. 
Hello everyone, this message from Bakhmut. Uh, we are Ukrainian soldiers. My name is Yegor and next to me, Artem. Uh, hi everyone, uh, now we are recording the video from the Bakhmut and uh, sometimes you can find some information uh, on Russian publics, on Russian articles that uh, Bakhmut, uh, there are some street fights uh, in the city of Bakhmut, but uh, it isn't true. Uh, Ukrainian soldiers are keeping position out of the city and uh, the Bakhmut, the whole city is under our control, under Ukrainian control. Uh, so, so and maybe more information we will give you later. Slava Ukraini. Slava Ukraini. Bakhmut Slava. is where all the uh, primary forces of the Wagner group are. Now we see amazing video footage of Ukrainian drones attacking the Russian Black Sea Fleet. And it actually nails several ships and takes down the Admiral Makarov, which is right there. And that's the flagship of the fleet. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. That was just detonation, feed cut. I don't know much about um, sea bearing drones. So if you guys do, uh, definitely let us all know in the comment section. Here's a huge explosion from CCC TV. This drone just seems to be looking for a target of opportunity in very choppy waters. Just remember, when you see the drone feed cut, it was either disabled or it hit target and exploded. This is one of a kind video. Pay attention because the ship actually fires at it and a helicopter above also begins to engage it. Remember, this is a drone. Let me know in the comment section what you think uh, those rounds are, what caliber they are. They seem pretty big. That was a round from the ship. Just missed it to the right. Watch this guy jump off the boat right there. I don't blame him. I would have done the same thing. Now, I do believe this footage from uh, the CC camera is the Russians actually striking one of the submer submersibles, excuse my language. You can see it up upper right hand corner there. Yeah, 
And there's here as we have uh, Ukrainian soldiers. They're marching towards the front in the Hassan region. Um, we got one more clip to go. It's very interesting. Uh, but I just wanted to say thank you guys for watching tonight. Like and subscribe. Donate to the channel costs if you can because YouTube is demonetizing all of us. Um, anything helps. Much appreciated. You know I love you all. Enjoy this last clip. The silencer is now silent. It's a deadly game of hide and seek along Ukraine's eastern front line. Soldiers with the 26th Artillery Brigade maneuver this 155 caliber German howitzer to its firing position. Russian forces are in the eastern outskirts of Bakhmut. The cannon is targeting Russian supply and artillery positions beyond the town. It takes around 40 seconds for the shell to reach its target. The trajectory is adjusted after information from drones and spotters monitoring the target zone. Back under cover, the men load more charges and prepare to fire again. Western weaponry has helped the Ukrainian army win back more territory in a month than Russian forces took in five. But the defense of Bakhmut remains one of Ukraine's biggest challenges on the Eastern Front line. Charles Stratford, Al Jazeera, Bakhmut, Eastern Ukraine.